This is not the first time that Chairman Randy Nix has uh, been called out of the bullpen in, in relief uh, or sent to bat when things were looking bad to pinch hit. And he always does an amazing job. Um, as all of you know, Randy's been here now for a number of years. He chairs our House Ethics Committee, um, which is not a um, job that wins you many friends. Uh, but uh, I don't know of anyone who has integrity that brings credit to all of us more so than Randy Nix. Uh, he has become a, a friend of mine, someone that I lean on and, and uh, go to um, and respect and admire uh, just because he's, he's such an honorable um, member. And um, I'm not going to talk about his political future, but uh, all I'm going to say today is if you haven't heard Randy get be our chaplain, you are in for a real treat. So without any further ado, I'm going to introduce to you our chaplain of the day today, the chairman of the House, House Ethics Committee, Chairman Randy Nix. Chairman Nix. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is a little bit of a, of a pinch hit. I was just getting ready to get in the car this morning to drive in when I got the call. Uh, and it, wasn't a, it was a pretty short walk from the bullpen. Uh, I want to read, you, you're supposed to finish with the poem, but I want to start with the poem, if I may, today. This always spoke to me as a, as a pastor. The title of the poem is The Preacher's Mistake. The Preacher's Mistake. It's by William Croswell Doan. It says, The parish priest of austerity climbed up in a high church steeple to be nearer God so that he might hand his word down to his people. When the sun was high, when the sun was low, the good man said unheeding sublunary things. From transcendency was he forever reading. And now and again, when he heard the creak of the weather vane a turning, he closed his eyes and said, Of a truth from God I now am learning. And in sermon script he daily wrote what he thought was sent from heaven, and he dropped this down on his people's heads two times one day in seven. In his age God said, Come down and die. And he cried out from the steeple, Where art thou, Lord? And the Lord replied, Down here among my people. So I am here among my people today. I have not had a tremendous amount of time to, uh, to prepare, but it's always good. And, and I just prayed that the Lord would give me a, a, a word to say that might be meaningful to you and uh, might help you. I thought immediately, Mr. Speaker, of a, of a passage of Scripture here, and maybe some of it fits and maybe some of it doesn't, but I want to go to the 10th chapter of Matthew. In the 10th chapter, 10th chapter of Matthew, Jesus is calling the 12, he's calling his disciples, and he's sending them out and telling them what he wants to do, and he's also preparing them for some very uh, tough times for difficulties. Uh, in verse 7, though, it says, and this is probably the most important thing, it says, As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. And then he goes on down in verse 17, and I read this a little bit with tongue in cheek, but hopefully I can make a point. He said, Be on your guard against men. They will hand you over to the local councils and flog you in their synagogues. I haven't been flogged yet. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings and state representatives, I'm adding that in, as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. 
At that time you will be given what to say, for it is not you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. So I hope I don't get flogged. I hope I don't get arrested. If I get flogged, though, we're going to do it on the biblical method. The one that has never made a mistake gets to hit me first. Um, so, Brother Al, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk that over if we get to that point. <laughs> when I don't have a lot of time to prepare, I usually try to find something that's meaningful and, and share it with you. And I want to share just a, a brief devotional. This came out of the, uh, the upper room. Uh, on Wednesday, December the 15th of this year. I think there's a great message in it for, for us as representatives and for us as people who may profess Jesus Christ or just us as citizens in general. The, the title of the little devotion is Trapped in the Airport. And it's um, the, the uh, scripture that's given one verse. It says, the Lord says, seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you. Now, this person writes, and it always tells you at the end who it is. It's a gentleman by the name of Leland P. Gamson from Indiana. And here's what he writes. He said, we're calling to, because we need your prayers, Pastor. We are trapped between flights in Chicago because of the snowstorm. Our pastor asked, are you inside where it is dry and climate controlled? Yes, I replied. Do you have access to water and food? Again, I said, yes. Then he asked, are you sick? I answered, no. He said to me, then you aren't really trapped, are you? I'll pray for you to be of service to the Lord where you are. We prayed together and my attitude changed almost immediately. I bought children's books at an airport store and offered them to families with children. My wife struck up a conversation with an older man wearing a Korean War veteran's hat. Later, we offered to wait in the food line for others. It became easy for us to approach others knowing we were all in the same situation. Additionally, several worried-looking stranded passengers accepted our offer to pray with them. The 16 hours in the terminal went rather quickly when we made ourselves available to others. We were not trapped. We were in the right place at the right time to reflect the love of God. And I hope you will just dwell on that last thought for a moment. I do believe that we're put in the places that we're put in for a reason. Some of them may seem difficult. Some of them may be challenging. But I believe if we'll look at them right, we, we come to the Lord, I think, like this man sometime, and we pray as if we've got some kind of major problem, some kind of catastrophe on us, when we're just not looking at the situation right. And I think if we'll get that attitude that says we are where we are to reflect the love of God and do that, then I think that all of these other things seem to, to work themselves out very easily. So I challenge you today. In this place, in your district, wherever you are, the, the, the scripture says, Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you. As the Lord sends you today, please do your best to reflect the love of God wherever you go. And let's pray. Father of grace and mercy, we thank you for this beautiful day. Lord, we thank you for the privilege to be of, servant, of service to others. Lord, I pray that you would bless each person here today, bless, bless each person in this house, that their goal would be to serve you, Lord, and to share your love with all of those that they come in contact with. Lord, I pray for our speaker as he leads us. Lord, I pray for all of our leadership. I pray for our governor, our lieutenant governor. We pray for those at the at the, the head of our, our federal government, Lord, to give, that you would give them your vision, that you would give them the vision that would bring this nation back to you. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen.